know if you would rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I've got it right this time. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, well, good morning. We, uh, on behalf of Commissioner Tail, Commissioner Candelaria, myself, uh, Jack Powers, our county administrator, Kim Purcell, our clerk, and uh, John Baxter, the county attorney. We welcome you here. First thing on the agenda, we have the minutes for last week. Commissioners, have you had the opportunity to read the minutes, and do you have any recommendations? I would right. move that we accept the proceedings of the Board of Commissioners of Montezuma County for June 23rd, 2020. Second. Motion and a second to approve the proceedings of the Board of Montezuma County Commissioners for the day of June 23rd, 2020. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Second thing on the agenda, we're going to go right to planning. And I believe we have Don and Jane, if you'd come on down. <laughs> Don. Don and Jane. Uh, Don and Jane. Jane and Don. <laughs> uh, Don and Jane. <laughs> that could be one name. <laughs> yeah. I know somebody else has got a couple of names for one. Larry <laughs> Don. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys today? Are you good? We're good. Good. All right. All right, then we'll uh, go over to Kim and she can uh, start us off on this public hearing. Commissioner Sukla. Here. Commissioner Attell. Present. Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Administrator Powers. Here. Attorney Baxter. Here. And Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for review and determination of a proposed exemption application and subdivision and rezoning application <coughs> submitted by Burke Family Trust on property located at 38359 Road H, Mancos, Colorado, located north of Road H, east of State Highway 160, situated in Section 36, Township 36 North, Range 14 West, NMPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, June 30th, 2020 at 9 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office online service at http co montezumaco smartgovcommunity.com, public home. You guys changed it. <laughs> <laughs> you may also contact the planning department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 15th day of June 2020, Kim Purcell Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado. Published in the journal on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kim. Uh, is anybody here representing the Burke family? Do you know Don? All right. Would you, would you like to come up, sir? Yes, sir. Sure. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Technical difficulty, it looks like. All right, Don, why don't you fill us in, or Jane? All right, so the, uh, the Burke family is looking at doing, uh, it's a, it's a two-step process here. First, we've got a proposed single lot development, which is the five acres on the east of their property. Mm-hmm that they want to uh, subdivide and rezone. That would leave uh, the remaining 36 plus acres um, on the west. And then the, uh, if, if that's approved, then they would like to do an exemption for the northern 10 plus or minus acres that is bisected off from Highway 160 from way back. Okay. And CDOT does not have a problem. Mm -hmm. okay. What kind of an exemption? What, what do you? What, what is the exemption? Because because the uh, highway divides that property off from the rest <coughs> of their property. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, anything to add, Mr. Is it Mr. Burt? Yes. Anything to add to that? We're good. I'm sorry. I said, is there anything to add to to what he proposed? No, I think that sums it up. Uh, there is a house on the five acres. Uh, and then the house that's on the remaining 27 acres. Those are the only two developments on the property. 
So, so this is just the exemption for the 10 the plus area. acres? Yeah. And then the proposed lot, mm -hmm. the single lot, that'll go through the Planning Commission at a later date? Or? That already well, went already through. through. Oh, okay. Yeah. All this is gone through. They're, they're, they're combined. It. They're doing them both Yeah, time. we're just saving time by not having gotcha. to do it gotcha. two separate BOCC Plan Planning meetings. Commission in favor of all this? They vote, they vote in favor of all this? Yes, okay. they were unanimous to recommend it for approval. Okay. All right. Any additional Makes questions, sense. commissioners? None for me. We'll open it up to uh, public comment if you'd like to comment on this proposed uh, single lot development and exemption application. If you'd come to the microphone, state your name and address. You sure, Leslie? Okay. Seeing none, we will close this. <laughs> I, I thought you was getting up. We will close this portion of the. Uh, public hearing to public comment and we'll go back to the commissioners for further discussion or recommendation anything it looks pretty yep. straightforward to me and the planning yep. commission is recommended for its approval so i would then move that the uh, board of county commissioners uh <coughs> approve the exemplar exemption application subdivision and rezoning application submitted by the Burke Family Trust on property located at 38359 Road H, Mancus, Colorado. Second. Hold on. Can, can, can we have that in two separate motions? Oh, you want them in two motions? Which okay. one do you want to do Which, first? The, the subdivision line? rezoning first and then the exemption. Okay, then I'll, I'll take back my motion and start <laughs> another one. Sorry, Keenan, thanks. I will move that, we have, that the Board of Montezuma County Commissioners approve a rezoning application Submitted by Burke Family Trust on property located at 38359 Road H, Mancus, Colorado. Second. Motion and a second to approve a subdivision and rezoning application submitted by the Burke Family Trust on property located at 38359 Road H, Mancus, Colorado, located north of Road H, east of State Highway 160. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Anybody else like to make another motion? I'll let you finish it. Okay. I would uh, like for the Board of Montezuma <laughs> County Commissioners to approve the exempl exemption application uh, for property. Is the same, same address? Mm -hmm. For property owned by the Burke Family Trust located at 38359 Road H, Mancus, Colorado. Second. Motion and a second to approve an exemption application submitted by the Burke Family Trust on property located at 38359. Five nine Road H, Mancus, Colorado. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There you go, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> and we will close this public hearing at this time. Mm -hmm. Got a couple minutes for the next one. Mm -hmm. One minute and counting. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to be here at nine oh nine. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> right on time, Ernie. Way to go. You are right on time. All right, Kim. Can you uh, read the notes? We like punctual. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Sukla. Here. Commissioner Tell. Present. Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Administrator Powers. Here. Attorney Baxter. Here. And Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for review and determination of a proposed subdivision and rezoning application and variance application submitted by Russell and Marsha Hindmarsh Trust, Agent Manus and Associates on property located at 
28339 Road in Dolores, Colorado, consisting of 80 acres more or less, located north of Road in and west of Road 28, situated in Section 5, Township 36 North, Range 15 West, NPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, June 30th, 2020, at 9:10 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office online service at https co montezuma co smart gov community com public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 15th day of June, 2020, Kim Purcell, Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado. Published in the journal on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Purcell. Uh, we'll turn it over to Don. So the uh, Highmarsh Trust is looking to separate their uh, house and the adjacent outbuildings from the ag land. So they're doing a, a single lot development to keep their residents and then sell off the um, ag property. Um, with the subdivision and rezoning, um, they also are asking for a couple of variances. One would be on the barn on the north, which is the 14.7 feet. And the other variance would be on the northwest, which is off of their porch uh, attached to the house. 28.5, I believe that is. Yes. All right, commissioners, uh, any questions? So we actually have, so we have two a subdivision and rezoning and yeah, then so have three and a variant and then a variant. Well, yeah. Okay. One so variant, two occurrences on the variants. Right. No, and I'm the reason they're doing that problem. is, is, excuse me, is, uh, Go ahead. they are leaving uh, as much ag land as, as possible for the irrigation system and, and whatnot that exists. And they also don't want more property to take care of than, than they can manage. So both, both parties are, uh, think this is the best option for both. Basically in the state planning. I, I've been by it and I've seen the, all the work they've done. Right where that OHP is on the map is where I broke my ribs after I got bucked off a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Very familiar with that property. Maybe you shouldn't trespass. I wasn't <laughs> trespassing. I had my cattle on. <laughs> I, I was. I had rented that place. Um, so anyway, planning commission. They were uh, unanimous to recommend it for approval. So it complies with everything other than the exemption for the variance for the setbacks. Correct. Mm -hmm. sure. And even if we had a twenty-foot setback, we'd still need a variance for the barn. Hmm. <laughs> There's always a, another case. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. One, one would comply. For sure. All right. Well, we'll open it up to public comment. If anybody would like to uh, comment on this proposal, if you would come to the microphone to state your name and address. Seeing none, we will close the uh, public comment portion of this public hearing and we'll go back to the commissioners for discussion and a recommendation we'll um, need we'll need to have a separate motion subdivision zoning and then the variance what order would you like to go in mr haley i'll, I'll, I'll go off the top so okay. i would uh, recommend that we accept the proposed subdivision submitted by russell and marcia hindmarsh trust uh, agent manus and associates located on property 28339 road and dolores second Motion is second to approve a subdivision and rezoning application submitted by Russell and Marsha Hindmarsh Trust agents, agent, agent is Manus and Associates on property located at 28339 Road in Dolores, Colorado. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Then I would also move that we accept the rezoning application for submitted by Russell and Marsha Hindmarsh Trust. Again, Agent Manus and Associates on property located at 28339 Road N. Second. 
Motion and a second to approve a, res or a rezoning application submitted by Russell and Marsha Hindmarsh Trust Agent Manus and Associates on property located at 28339 Road in Dolores, Colorado. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then I would also yeah. move that we accept a variance application submitted by Russell and Marsha Hindmarsh Trust Agent Manus and Associates on property located at 28339 Road and Dolores. Second. Motion and a second to approve a variance application submitted by Russell and Marsha Hindmarsh Trust Agents Manus and Associates on property located at 28339 Road and Dolores, Colorado. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We will close this public hearing at this time. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Boy. Two and three steppers. You guys are really stepping it up today. Yeah, they're <laughs> three to three on one shot. We like it. Thank well, you, Ernie. We'll take our full ten minutes if we can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Want to want to use your allotted time? Huh? That's yeah. right. So Spencer, nope. I think bought that right. Yeah. yeah. He did a good job on it. Yeah, he did. He cleaned it up and it went by this morning. And boy, it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, if, if uh, James Dietrich has talked with Ernie about the well, we were easement. just talking about that. Oh. Yeah. He's going to go talk to Ernie outside. Okay. We're, We're on, on the same page. We're on it. Because you saw that post I said to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of slow to respond. Super slow. That was <laughs> three weeks ago. You know? Yeah. But I think he said he was going to go back to Arizona. But he said that he would send me a text message saying that he was going to meet with him in Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I think I would succeed on it, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind talking to his attorney and saying, hey, what do you think? Why do you think that? Two more minutes. Because uh, they're likely not going to have any more documentation. We're trying. I can hardly wait to go up that left road. You got me nervous. Well, it's actually, I, so this is a very kind of tree blown over. I believe it. I seen how bad it was yesterday down the day. Very unusual year this well, this time. Forever. And it just keeps going, it's every day. It's Forever. every stinking day. Yeah, crazy weather. Okay, Mrs. Purcell, it looks like we've, we're at 920. Commissioner Sukla. Here. Commissioner Attell. Present. Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Administrator Powers. Here. Attorney Baxter is here, but in the hallway. And Kim Purcell, <laughs> Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for review and determination of an AR3-9 rezoning request and subdivision application for proposed single lot development submitted by Jonathan and Sharon Spiney on property located at 20615 Road G, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 48.50 acres more or less, located north of Road G, situated in Section 1, Township 35 North, Range 17 West, and MPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, June 30th, 2020 at 9.20 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices. 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. 
Information may be obtained from the Planning Office online service at https co montezuma -co -smart -gov -community com public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 15th day of June 2020, Kim Purcell Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the journal on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Purcell. Is Jonathan or Sharon here? Yeah. Come on up, Jonathan. Yeah, Mr. Spinney's here. I'll give you some distance. Sure, thank you. You might want to translate. Good morning, how are you? How are you doing? Good. All right, Don, go ahead. So the Spinneys are um, looking at dividing off uh, a single lot development of around eight acres um, with an existing residence off of their uh, rest of their property that has their main house and all the uh, ag land on it um, is basically it. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? You got got access to how do you access that piece you're breaking yeah, off back there? That that comes in off uh, the northwest side of the property. You access off of G. There's actually three different property owners that access there. Um, their property on the east divides that driveway, that road, um, in half, and then the uh, the neighbor to the north has the western half of that driveway hmm. so that uh, that same access on the remaining 40 acres will lead to the eight acre parcel okay so then the yellow line just is the separation that's of just the yeah that's the boundary of line. the acre mm -hmm. recommendation uh, p and z was uh, unanimous in recommending it for approval All right, at this time we'll open it up to public comment on this proposed uh, public hearing. If anybody would like to comment about this, if they would step up to the podium and state their name and address. Seeing none, we will close the uh, public comment portion of the public hearing and go back to the commissioners. Is this a two-step? Uh, you can just do the, the subdivision and zoning together. Okay. Commissioners, any recommendations? Sure. I'd like to move that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners approve an AR3-9 rezoning request and subdivision application for a single lot development submitted by Joanne and Sharon Spiney, or Spinney, on property located at 20615 Road G, Cortez, Colorado. Second. Motion and a second to approve an AR3-9 rezoning request and subdivision application for proposed single lot development submitted by Jonathan and Sharon Spinney on property located at 20615 Road G, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 48.5 acres or more or less. All those in favor? Aye. 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 At this time, we'll close the public hearing and... Done. The application is complete. You can leave. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Now we have the planning department. They're going to pre present for discussion of a, a special improvement district for the Upper Road 42 Water Association. So I think um, you got contacted by, by Laura. Um, this was probably back in January, February. Um, Who was it that you got contacted by, Don? It, uh, Laura Reich. Oh, okay. I think she's the vice president of, of this association that they formed. Um, so what? This is kind of just a preliminary, since with the coronavirus, we hadn't been able to meet with her or any of our departments to figure out the ins and outs of, of <clears throat> what would be required to set this up. Um, they have been in discussions with with uh, the uh, DOLA as far as some grant uh, money and applications. There's 27 uh, homeowners that are northeast of Jackson Reservoir that are uh, built, uh, put together this association and what they're wanting to do would be to install their own pipeline 
water tank at the north end of all the properties and pumps down um, from the water plant out of Jackson and um, that way they could quit hauling water. So what they're looking for um, from the county would be to set up a, a special improvement district but I figured we could just see because it's a large amount of money the the initial estimate without any actual formal engineering and whatnot at this point is around 700,000 so it's it's something if, if the county doesn't even want to consider it then I didn't figure we needed to waste everybody's time going through the process and finding out uh, you know more details from them but uh, also it would be good if we get input I guess from from Kim and the commissioners on uh, if you would be willing to uh, pursue this or let them pursue this what the steps are in forming that district and if it if it goes to just your vote or goes to the public for a vote or how that works mm. it, it, it could be either way but do you th th what they're requesting just to be clear is they want the county to do the initial outlay of money and then correct they pay the county back do you are you familiar with how they set up the special water district for Goodman Point uh, yeah in fact when she first contacted me last oh, probably the end of last summer I emailed her all those documents they are were using the, the same I believe the same attorney and and possibly the same engineering firm and they more or less followed that as a plan <coughs> Since we, since we had that information, we figured we'd cut through some of the red tape and, and uh, let them work from that so they've got a starting point. Who is that? Who's, the, who's their attorney that they're using? Uh, is he local? I believe so, yeah. Or out of Durango. I think, I think they both might be out of Durango. So they would get the funding through DOA? Or no, they the funding would come yeah. through the county, but they would all, then they would be using that money um, probably as a match to apply for grants through DOLA, which DOLA is. So this would be another bond type situation set up, just like the LID for the. Yep. Right. Sub, so. And since that one would, I mean, still is in discussion, I didn't figure we needed to get all parties together till we kind of get an idea of initial indication from you guys do you think we would be similar in the capital outlay as w the Goodman Point project I would assume so well, and then what they would do is they would put in the infrastructure um, the Jackson Water Company I don't know the, their exact name they would um, oversee the operation of that and then at the time that everything was paid off <clears throat> then the water line tank infrastructure would be deeded over to the water company is 42 is that the one that goes up towards transfer park mm -hmm. yes. okay yeah so, so, so it's everything on top to of the hill. hill okay i think it's every, would it be everything that's on top of the hill right you climb down going yep okay and they would they would put i think it's oh i don't remember what size water tank i think they're looking at a ten thousand gallon tank so they would pump to that and then gravity flow to all the homes from there. Is the initial design anyway. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, payback about the same in years as, you know? Uh, we'd we'd, have, that far we'd have to, okay. yeah. I think that's, that would be really we haven't discussed system. anything of any sort. Um, mm -hmm. Just figure we would get an initial indication from you guys before we got <coughs> more people involved. So because there are two different, one is a road and one is a, one is a water, can those bonds be combined and then separated that way or do they have to be two different bonds? I don't know. I mean, they're under different statutory schemes, so they might have to be different, but it sounds like it might make sense to, to combine them. So I'd look into that. I mean, I think the question for you all is that it's a pretty big initial outlay of money and is that something you all want to consider doing or, or not? And if so, mm -hmm. it can be done. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, we did it at a good point, and in fact, we ended up making more money because they kept sending us the payment after they had already <laughs> paid it off. Had some absentee owners that kept sending the money, kept coming. Yeah. Oh, 
was that even after well, we had to give it but, back, but they did. Yeah. They right. overpaid us. I, I guess my my question my question is. I'm sorry, go ahead. Was that Jim. a ten year bonding cycle you did? For I can't that, remember. Or? We were just here when it completed and I don't know when it was initiated, Jim. I can't remember when they started it. But uh question for me is do uh, if we if the county chose to do this, do we do we attach a like a three or four or five percent interest rate on, on doing this given you know, if it's seven hundred thousand bucks, uh I don't think we can expect the county to lay out that kind of money. With just a dollar for dollar, we're not in the zero percent financing business like some of these car companies are. I think we've got to look at that and see what kind of a rate of return we can get on that that amount of money. That's a that's a large amount of money. Right. And there's what? got to, there's got to be some kind of. My assumption uh, is that they're coming. To, I don't know this, but they're coming to the county to avoid going to a bank to right. avoid uh, right. exactly, exactly what you're that. saying. Well, uh, well, why or, does the water company not do that? Because that's part exactly. of the, of yeah. the and I don't know which one it why is. Why doesn't rural water, yeah. The rural water company is up but there. I'm pretty sure, well, I, I don't know. I haven't talked to any of them, but they probably don't want to outlay that kind of cash. Yeah, are they, are they gonna want, they're going to want or the right. residents to pay just like you get to pay for the infrastructure when you when you get rural water, do you pay for it to get yeah. built to you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand the people's position, but I don't think they can look to come into the county to to get that kind of financing for a project that benefits them and they're they're the ones benefiting from it where where there's no there's no gain to the county whatsoever i mean it's uh, that's that's a lot of money to be laying out there for nothing and i and i'd like to know if they've went through that rural water company yeah and seeing if they wouldn't we, oh i'm i'm sure they've talked to them because that's how they know exactly. how it, how it's Go set ahead. up yeah it's kind of like the gas company. I asked them if they'd give me natural gas out to my property. They said, absolutely, we will. If you put and the I pipe said, in. I said, well, how can we go about this? And they said, well, it's going to cost you about 50000 bucks to do it, and you can pay half down when we start, and the other half to do when we're finished. <laughs> so, yeah, it's that simple. Yeah, yeah it's that simple, yeah. <laughs> well, the only thing I don't think it would be uh, 700000 because if the Dola grant was, say, 50%, that's 350000 Right. Right. So... so yeah, that's I, in half, and maybe it would be even more than fifty percent. So yeah, I don't I don't know any details. Yeah. I just figured, you know, if if it was a flat no now, we'd just let her know. Um, yeah. But if if you're open to the discussion, then we'll have to. Uh, I guess John can let us know who needs to be involved in the discussion. If it's more than you guys on how it gets set up, how it gets yeah. taxed or assessed or repaid any any more details in that well it would have to be assessed by it wouldn't be assessed it would it would be taxed it would be taxed there would be a levy that that special district would would have a levy and then that would pay the county general or whatever fund it came out of directly you know from ellen to that fund mm -hmm. so but you'd be, be responsible for collecting that then but we yes we'd be responsible for collecting well, um, I think these are going to start coming more and more all the time. So we well, should probably be aware of what that bonding type situation is. And if they, I mean, if you could do a road with one, like we've been requested and or a water district. Um, so, I mean, if you can find out that information, what we really have we can to do. Combine them. Yeah, if we can combine them, you might be able to get two projects done under one bond mm -hmm. and it would make two, two different areas of the county. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I would be open for more discussions just for the fact that there is a way that the county, if you think long term, would benefit, and that is is that um, that's a very pretty area going up to Transfer Park. It borders Forest Service, and usually when you have water and electricity, you uh, build fancier houses. And uh, I believe in the future they would start building fancier houses up there, and then the county would benefit forever on the tax revenue from those fancier houses. But yeah, if they if they're building this beyond their capacity, I mean, if they're if they're building it just to take care of what's there now, those property owners that are there now, then then I think that's one one deal. If they're building so, that to where ex expanded capacity where they can sell water rights and taps on down right. uh, to others, have some expanded capacity, that would make that would follow. So it's designed to just thinking. service those twenty-seven lots right yeah. now. 
All right. Th it, there's not a design yet. It's all I, I preliminary. Think, I think then it's open for further discussion. Yeah, I think we need to discuss it more with them. And I that'll think give okay. us time to see if there's a bonding, if, yeah. if those can cross over. Yeah. So on the bond, is that a public vote to approve the bonds? It or doesn't is have that, to be. I don't, I don't it can so. be uh, if they want to try to go around us, but no, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Um, and so maybe have their attorney give me a buzz. Okay. I can let her know that. Perfect. All right. But by the time we start working on a bond and they start engineering, it'll probably end up about the same time. <laughs> Good I mean, really. Sure. I, I mean, oh, it'll it'll take some effort. It'll yeah. take some effort to get it <clears throat> because that's a pretty significant engineering. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the commissioners are in a consensus to pursue it. We'll see okay. what happens. Very good. Yeah. But, but I, the, the letter. Did we? Do we have a letter on the proposed changes to the land use code? I don't do have you? a finish yet. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's Anything all we got. Else? Nope. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you. This time we have public comment. If anybody would like to comment to the commissioners, if you would please come to the microphone and state your name and address. Come on up, sir. Be sure and push that button and turn that microphone on, if you would, please. Thanks for the batteries. There you You're go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Kinney. My wife, Patricia, and me received a notice of a public hearing on July 9th that addresses an application for a utility-grade solar farm next to our home because of the environmental impact that the project imposes on me, the East Valley community, and Montezuma County, I am requesting that the hearing be postponed because of the health issues that we are facing. Travel through Cortez is increasing, and the virus is still out there. I am 80, my wife is 76, and we are concerned. It is only fair that all those who want to address this hearing should be able to do so. Empire Electric has been trying for three years to find a PPA for this project. Surely Energy One can wait until we are all safe in a public gathering. I want to thank you for your consideration and as a reference, this project was addressed on June 26, 2017, at the commissioner's meeting. Do you know when the public hearing is set up? It's set oh. for July 9th. What date do you think would be safe? In this mm -hmm. environment right now with it, I, 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 I just don't know. Commissioner, we can still do public hearings through Zoom so everybody can attend no matter where they're at. We, we've been doing that now for the last 120 days, so you wouldn't have to attend in person. Um, the technology is there that we could actually view you and you could do your comments um, up on our screen through, through a, a streaming. <coughs> can we get that out to the people somehow that they know that they can do this mm -hmm. because they're just told to attend this meeting? Sure, we yeah. can put the Zoom link out. We can, yeah. we can put the Zoom links out on anything we, we and everybody can And on how they go about doing that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives you all that information right there on the, when you, when you send out the Zoom notice, it shows you the number to call and how to call in and everything. Okay. Okay. You can do it on phone, computer, iPad, whatever you want to do it on. Thank you for your okay. consideration. Appreciate Thank you, it. Mike. We appreciate in. it. Thanks for coming in. Anybody else, public comment? Good morning, Good David morning. Nuttall, Needful Provision 25337B, it's Road 2.5 Dolores. Uh, we had a prior discussion that we're continuing. I clarified with USDA NRCS what their actual priorities are on this new division. Their major focus is on IP, innovative production, innovative crop production. 
The number one priority under that section is education and on-the-job training of new farmers. So there is a small element on, uh, they want a demonstration on urban farming. That's actually a very small part of it. What they would like in discussing with them what we might be able to do, they would like for NPI to set up an urban, or rather a, a agricultural training center, which we propose to do. And they want us to teach innovative technologies. As an example, we would have a summer garden with uh, subsurface micro drip irrigation, uh, bioactivated uh, uh, biochar fertilization and other demonstration projects. We would have an all season greenhouse that's solar heated, solar cooled and has other innovations that we will be demonstrating. We also will, will do a biosecure solar operated uh, broiler house, broiler chicken house. In addition to that, we'll do a hoop house that will be modified with supplemental solar heating and solar zeolite cooling so we can take any uh, hoop house, high tunnel, can convert it into an all-season greenhouse and it will operate with very minimal energy costs because it's solar operated. Over and above that, they specifically ask us to set up a counter desertification training program. We have expertise in this area. If you're not familiar with counter desertification, the, the first very successful project was done by the government of India in the Thar Desert of, of, of northwest, north, uh, northwest India. They developed a lot of new, very exciting technologies and we have added to those, we have improved what they had, and we have some new innovations in counter desertification uh, technologies, growing crops in the desert. So NRCS wants us to train their personnel in these technologies, and we have that expertise. So that would be a part of our training program. So we don't know that this is gonna happen. The grant award has to be approved, so we're doing what NRCS we're proposing to do what they ask us to do so there's good reason to think that the the grant will be awarded but I don't know that you never know it's a crapshoot a little bit better than buying a lottery ticket so we have a good record of 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 getting grant awards we have fantastic partners uh, Pfizer Gardall is a billion dollar corporation. They're building our systems to our specifications. They have sold over 250,000 agricultural structures in the United States for about $1 billion. And we have a large pending contract for Uzbekistan, which includes several NPI technologies. So my question is, is it, it benefits Montezuma County in what way? Uh, the primary benefit I see for Montezuma County, there's a large number of hoop houses that could be very economically converted to all season greenhouses, which would allow crop production all year long. The, the major benefit is that you, you're going to have, through the winter, you're going to have local fresh organic foods being brought into the marketplace. It's going to be uh, a dramatic increase in uh, farm income. Over and above that, we will, we will have our food processing trailer, USDA, FDA approved, which was developed and tested by uh, Kentucky State University. Uh, the documentation on their demonstration established and documented the fact that they can triple farm income by getting farmers to sell value added instead of farm gate. Uh, most farmers sell farm their crops at farm gate prices. The average is about 16% of retail for a similar crop. You do value added, it triples that amount up to about 60% very often. So the farmers they work with, they jack their, they, tri they basically triple their income. We're gonna be training farmers to do that. So I got a couple questions. Um, we already have a training center. It's called the Yellow Jacket uh, Research Center through CSU. 
Right. We already have a year-round greenhouse. Um, Four Seasons Nursery does that. They have it. They grow the vegetables year-round, and you can go right. pinch them. Right. As well as um, the Kulon family down there off of Road 21 below the airport. Right. So um, both of those entities, they didn't. I don't believe they got a grant. I think they. It was a. It was a capital. Um, capitalism where they Their went out. Yeah. You know, did. Right. So we have those things already right so and you're here today to request a letter of support for the project is that correct that's all we were asking is for a letter of support which gives us extra points is all it does in the application process and we appreciate the people that you know are, are doing what they're already doing what usda is doing is adding is asking us to add on some extras that we have that we have expertise in and uh, working with Pfizer you know we will come we will help farmers who want to expand go into production do the training Pfizer will come in and help them you know uh, build the all-season greenhouses so we're just adding to, on to what's already here all right so, uh, commissioners any discussion about this so, yeah and there's no I mean we asked the question last last week there whether we sign on or we don't, it doesn't keep you from submitting your application and or uh, yeah. being looked at. Going after your grant money. But if, right. but if a but letter from us will, will, will help you, will, will benefit you in your application process for this grant, then I, then I see no reason for us not to. The only, the only thing he's asking of us is to state in a letter to, to the USDA or Correct. whomever that, uh, that we're – that we're in support of his concept of education and and his Food farming production. yeah so i i can't see any harm in that i mean i can't see it, especially if he's going to benefit maybe some of the people that are already doing it and when is the it, grant application um when, when do they award those um, when would we know the that? application goes through grants.gov it's due on the 6th of july uh, it takes about 90 to 120 days for him to make the award then there is a grant negotiation session where they actually, you actually sit down with, uh, we would sit down with USDA and NRCS and negotiate what's actually going to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I don't have an issue with the letter. I, I don't either. I, I, don't I do. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to vote against it. I, okay. I feel like it's competition with um, the entities that are already out there and, um, and just, I'm sick of wasting $2 million of taxpayer money over and over again. Um, I don't see, unless I could see $2 million come back to the community. Um, I mean, we've already got the people that own the, the farm. We, you can go up there on Road 31, and you can see their hoop houses, and they were doing the same thing. And then we have that, that food fresh. Uh, farm they, fresh. Farm fresh. Farm fresh, yeah. We've got that going on. And uh, yeah, I just see that this would be in direct competition with with our current farmers, our current farmers are very willing to adapt. And so, you know, they used to just only pin, plant pinnel beans, and now they plant anisazi yeah. beans, and now they plant canola plants. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I just feel like this is in direct competition with our, our current farmers here, and, and it gives you an advantage over them because they're but not coming not, to us. You're not competing, right? You're actually training them so they can grow and be more productive. We're training. We're not competing in what we grow in, in our model structures will all be donated to uh, low-income families in in dolores montezuma county it's a donation food donation project and uh, part of the effort is pandemic preparedness they so want one other question then so you, of this two million dollars there will be nobody paid a salary i, I only saw it's it was not two million oh, correction oh what's the number snap was two million we didn't we weren't able to move quickly enough on that because we had some delays, some barriers. How much? This 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 grant is two hundred and ninety-seven thousand. We're doing a three hundred and ten thousand dollar match. A and private match. Everything a match of three hundred ten thousand. Everything we produce goes to low income. Where does the three hundred and ten thousand match? Who's putting that up? What is it? Needful provision. Which, which is you? That's you. So you're Pardon? going to go you're, to your you're, bank. That's my you're charity, gonna, yeah. You're going to put up the, your personal money of 310000 It's in-kind uh, match, which is technology. 
We have technologies valued at over $9 million. I just refused a $7 million cash offer for one of my patents. So we're not a rinky-dink corporation, or charity, rather. And, and out of this, this $295,000, nobody will be paid a salary, or they will be paid so much per hour. Out of that, it'll all go to infrastructure? It goes to creating models, training models, and the food produced. So the answer mm -hmm. is no. It all goes go to, to low-income popula the populations well, in the county. In the proposal I saw, there were some salaries involved in that. There were a couple of there, salaries There are some. There. We can do staff salaries. Yeah. Correct. So there, is, so there are paid positions to go with this. It's not all. There's, well, I think there's three paid positions, yeah. yeah. There was a technician, uh, the lowest, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a technician, mm -hmm. a. About fifty or $60,000 worth of salaries. Yeah, there were that. three and then yeah. a. Yeah, that's, right. that's correct. So there are salaries involved in that, Commissioner. Okay. There would have been that I saw three of them. All right. Well, I, I think you're going to get it because we've already had the commissioners talk. But so why don't we? Yeah. See if there's a motion to. Hmm. I, I think Commissioner Sukla asked that you bring a draft letter. Did you do that for us? I I did the I just, I said I'll give you a draft. I have it now. I changed the title of our project to. Ag Innovations for Critical Food Supplies and Pandemic Preparedness. I, I don't know if the commissioners have seen it, but if you're asking them to, to vote on whether or not they're going to do that, maybe it's they should a, look at it. Yeah, it's a, or you can it's change this however you want. I don't know what it it's is. It's just a simple statement of support for the project. Thank you. So, You know, again, so it's, it keeps so using, using the word urban, urban yeah. and we are not urban. We are rural. I, I don't understand why. So change uh, it. Take that out of there. Okay. Not important. They made a mistake in naming their new division, I think, because it's caused a problem. Mm -hmm. So your only other support that I've seen in writing is from the Rotary Club in Dolores. Is that correct? Of which you're the... You're a president or something of that club, or is that correct? No, I'm I'm the, uh, the service chair of okay. the Dolores Rotary, mm -hmm. and I write global international grants for Rotary. We're doing one for El Salvador. We have a massive program for fertil soil fertility improvement in El Salvador using bioactivated biochar which doubles the crop yield on a long-term basis up to about 20 years, hmm. documented by research in seven where, countries. Where are you getting biochar? Because we've got a guy over in Pagosa Spring who's been trying to do biochar for a number of years, and he can't get, can't get it off the ground. Well, so you, know how, you have to know how to make it. So you make it. It requires a knowledge of pyrolysis. Well, I think he's got that. I think he's got that. I just don't think he's been able to see a way to do it and well, have some it people, economically some people feasible. don't know they have to back bioactivate it you have to mm. crush it and soak it for 10 days in a mix of water cow manure and good soil with uh, soil microbes the pyrolysis creates thousands of cavities in what looks like charcoal and the soil microbes get in there and it's a happy hotel and the rent they pay is nutrients for the soil so there's documented research in seven countries. So, but you you got that. I mean, you you you're you're making that. biochar. You you've got it at your disposal right now. One of the ladies we right. have in El Salvador has a PhD in ag, and her specialty is biochar. I, I understand that. I know there's, but you've got this. Somebody's oh, yeah. man, somebody's manufacturing. It's being created and and I've readily got a small ready to, model. Dis, to dis, distribute. I'm, I've been making it. So it's not that big a deal on a commercial on a on a level that you're talking to a garden yeah. scale. 
yards here? We, we're doing small holder farmers in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. They have a couple of acres <laughs> in most cases. Okay. All right. If you help me get 350,000, I'll get you a heck of a garden. Okay. Okay. Well, I. Well, I guess we need to get this thing to a vote somehow, yeah. don't we? We need to make a decision today. So, uh, I, I don't know if you can make a motion and then vote no on your own motion. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I'm not sure how that works, but uh. you, can. you can. So uh, you can you can also let it die if there's no motion, yeah. then there's no movement forward with it. Correct? Yeah. So if there's nothing. Then I'm going to let it die. Then you can. Let, then it can. Then it can die. Yeah. So, I wish sorry, you the, no. the best. But being yeah. a commissioner for seven years, I can tell you a, a trend that I've seen over and over again. And I hope I'm wrong, but I I see a lot of money spent on uh, what we got one going on now, the Dolores Watershed, and that was a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar grant that went to try to cut. Uh, um, 200 acres of land that's actually been four years going on four years now to cut um, 200 acres of land to start so that if there was a, a devastating forest fire the timber would be treated in the Dolores River corridor right and and uh, it would help not contaminate our water with the fire and what I seen happen on that four years was uh, a lot of people got salaries they have yet to to cut one tree down and now they're asking for another one yeah. grant for another two hundred thousand dollars and and i'm a doer i think all of us that are sitting up here are doers you know when you say you're gonna gonna do this garden i want to see the garden when you say you, you're gonna do char charcoal or char yeah, char we we want to see a plant they're pumping out you know a million dollars worth a, a month or whatever but I don't want to see these little bitty models because I just feel like it's a waste of taxpayer money when the guy that's really sweating, the guy that is putting all of his blood, sweat, and tears into a certain project, that if he fails, he's out of business. I, I have more uh, reliability. I rely on them more thinking that they're going to finally get something done than, than these, I call it pork spending at a local mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. it, it's just the way that I feel. Um, and I, I hope you prove me wrong. Yeah, I, I have successful projects documented in a number of books in 42 countries worldwide. I worked five years just in Southeast Asia. One of the books is Vietnam's High Ground by J.P. Harris. I have never failed at one of my projects. I've had multi-million dollar projects. My first grant was $12 million for a project in Vietnam. My successes are documented far and wide in books and studies. I've been an advisor to two presidents, JFK and Nixon. I've been in and out of the White House. I was an advisor to the special group for counterinsurgency. I don't fail, and NPI does not fail with its projects. You, you are basing your opinion on things that we had nothing to do with. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. You know, so you're entitled to that opinion, but it's not valid in our case. I hope so. Appreciate I, your I, time. Thank you. So it's a dead issue at this point. No support. There's no movement That's, at this time, yeah. so that would be a dead issue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Yep. Anybody Any, else for public comment? Tommy, you can start it. <laughs> yeah. well, Hi, you guys. Good morning. How are you, Mary? I'm good. Good. You always call me Mary, and that's my mom's that's name. That's right. I, that, <laughs> I need to stop that, don't I? That's okay. <laughs> uh, I thought she was great. Yeah. I just thought it was time I came back and kind of brought you up to speed of what's happened. To back up about two months or three or whatever it was, you know, our bid was way over, our first bid. And so we rejected that. And since then, I have reached out to each of the 40 contractors that were at that first walkthrough. Every one of them said that 
there was not enough scope of work. They didn't know exactly what had to be done based on the plans that they got. So I have written room by room a scope of work. Wow. So it says, you know, the come in the reception room and build a reception desk. And it tells them the dimensions, etc. And I have, uh, well, even on the very front of the building, it's, uh, it tells them about the, the windows that go on the front of the building and the specs on those windows. So we're about ready to go back out to bid. Uh, Janine is looking over, the architect is looking over everything that the scope of work says, plus we have gone through and actually done specs that she did not have in our first packet. So those are almost finished. I'm about ready to go back out to bid. And I know this has been a long process, but the good part is we have raised an additional 50,000. <laughs> so that was good. We're gonna need the 50,000 based on the uh, sewer survey. And I, I told you, I think, at one of the other briefings that we found Orangeburg under that building. And you know, Orangeburg was the old, it was like uh, tar paper dipped in orange no, wax so and it collapses. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bucky said that what they would do instead of going, taking that Orangeburg out, which would be the whole length of the back half of that building, he would uh, saw cut from that back restroom straight south into the parking lot and hit the sewer line there. I talked to the city about tapping into that sewer line and he said that he, uh, Sean said that, that he didn't think that was gonna be an issue. If it is, it might cost me $6,000 to tap in a new tap. Um, it's a good thing we've raised some extra money. Our original thought was $250,000 budget. But that does not include all of the displays, nor does that include the mural we want to put on the side of the building that you can see from Main Street. So, and you know, when I go out and look for people to do the mural, it's it ranges from 15 to 25,000. Uh, plus we have, uh, we need to have a history of Montezuma County video when people walk in that they can see and kind of get an over picture. And you know, that's another 19,000. It just seemed like everywhere I turn around it's, Something else. I got to go raise so some. They more. charge fifteen to twenty-five thousand to 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 paint a pit. Uh. To do yes, it's amazing. They uh, you know, and I appreciate the artist ability. Have you reached out to more than one artist because that's oh, I've I've talked they, about they four. do it for free in these protests. <laughs> 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 huh? Good idea. Well, anyway. Uh, just to keep moving so that I don't get the buzzer here. Uh, I guess you did see this. Got it in the mail, sure did. And um, it tells that we've raised 300,000 up in here. Good. And we have had a lot of, in fact, yesterday I got a check for $1,000 from, uh, you guys will probably remember the McDill family. McDill. They lived up in Lakeview. Um, uh, what was so do you so do you think that that uh, you're going to be done before November? You mm. think that we're what? Are you going to be ready? To, is it going to be open this year? 
I want to have you in it before the end of the That's year. That's why I'm asking that question. <laughs> I know you I are. You said that once time. already. I hope that we can start July. And, well, you know, it's only a 90-day to 120-day project. Yeah. I, my, my thought, Ann, is, is let's get the museum open and then let's worry about the video that introduces everything and the mural on the wall. Exactly. And, uh, let's let's get that remodel done, get your sewer done, and get your, get your museum up and running. And then as you pro progress from there, some of these other ancillary things can be looked well, at. Well, you and I are on the same page okay. because those things are like extras. Right. And, and right. they would add to the museum tremendously. But those two things specifically are like extras. If we can get the remodel done, see on the first bid, they thought they had to go in and take out all of the sheetrock that's up there. We left the outside wall sheetrock. We don't want them to do that because that's a lot of extra work and and money replacing it. Yeah, demolition and replacing. We just need repair here and there. Mm -hmm. The ceiling will be the issue as far as I'm concerned because the pipes are already there and we want to put sheetrock up on that old lid. It is on most of it, but not all of it. And... Uh, so yeah, you're right. Now, uh, Victoria and Mike, who, uh, Mike Williams is the one that designed the displays up at the Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. And he and Victoria, oh shoot, what's her name? Black, uh, Fred's wife. Blackburn. Yeah, but that's not the name she goes by. Oh, anyway, mm -hmm. she also is and they very- are married? Yeah, <laughs> they're married. But the last name's not the same? No. A lot of people do that nowadays. Oh, I, oh, okay. I'm, oh, okay. They're explaining to me. They're teaching me <laughs> <laughs> how that works. Okay. Anyway, anyway Victoria and, and, and Mike are, help, are part of the design team, to, and they're volunteering their services to design all of the displays. displays. Yeah. And, and we're continuing to get display stuff. Well, we'll I think we're all on the same page. We really I know. see that we, we just yeah, we I am so tired of doing, of waiting and waiting yeah, and waiting. And then with the virus and then, yeah. you know. Yeah. But all of the contractors have told me they're still working and they want to keep going. Um, one thing I do need, and I have reached out to John and, and Shaq, one thing that I want to put in the, I'm going to call it a construction book, handbook, where I have the, the scope of work and the owner's rep listed and phone numbers for each contractor to receive, I want to put a sample contract in there. And I don't know what else John needs or what John needs to give me kind of a sample. If I just had kind of an idea of what a county contract would look like for a contractor for that building. Um, we have these relatively new forms that yeah. I can forward to her. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty straightforward and simple. Yeah, it's it, it just something that I can stick in that whole packet. That's all I need. You can help you know, me out. Just shoot me an email and ask me for that, and I'll reply to it with the Okay, kind I'll of do that. Forms. I'll go home and do that. You know, the uh, geothermal system, Mike told me that it works more efficient right now when you have less rooms because he doesn't have to have all of those individual little zones. That's probably my phone, but let it go. That's twenty $25. As you leave, leave the room, just put it there by the door. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So anyway, we're... Uh, that'll have to be redone, that whole 
geothermal because it had 24 little vents going into each room mm -hmm. and now we just need it open you know we have it all open mm -hmm. uh, I want to let you know that Muscanel donated all of the wood for the floor in the assembly room and their new parent company uh, will donate the uh, finish for that. And uh, the only thing we have to pay for is the labor of the parent company's representative here to do the work. So that'll be nice. It'll be, it'll be a beautiful th three quarter inch hardwood floor. Well, we move forward. Action. Yeah. Get, okay. Get the yeah. contract and, and uh, get going. Get I going. know. Let's, yeah. let's, I just wanted to let you know I want to get going just yeah. as bad as you do. <laughs> okay. But I got to stop and go see her one day next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, and then John will get yep. that to you. Thank you. Did I did it buzz? Oh yeah, it went oh, off. Yeah. It went off. You're kind of privileged. <laughs> 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 you just didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody else for public comment? All right. One more. Good morning. Thank you. Alan Mays, 21693 Cannon Road 21 in Lewis. I just wanted to mention uh, your very conscientious uh, uh, actions for things that come to you. I think uh, I, I appreciate that very much. I think that uh, uh, proposal that came to you that's still up on the screen here, I think. Uh, the way you ta uh, thought about it, uh, put it forward, I think was very good. I do think that uh, this could turn into some competition for local growers that uh, uh, maybe needs to be thought about a little bit more. And I do know we have training and facilities in the, in the area that can help these folks that are already here improve and give opportunity for others to to learn from them as well. So thank you very much for your consideration on those things. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, seeing none, we'll go back to the agenda and we'll go to Gail Alexander and the gun show. Gail Alexander, 20620 Highway 420, 491, mm. Lewis, Colorado, 81327. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Kim, Good morning. it's nice to see you without masks. <laughs> I, I am, I'm really enjoying the fact that we maybe are getting back to a little bit of normalcy. And I really want to tell you thank you so much for accepting and allowing us to maybe get our gun show going in August. I just want to kind of update you on some things. If you have any questions, I want you to ask me. But this is what our plan is so far okay we're going to take temperatures when people come in and if you have been and I believe all of you've been out to the gun show in past years mm -hmm. when you come in they, we normally take your money and then you walk around to get your guns checked if you have guns so we're going to switch it around a little bit people will come in they're going to sign a waiver we're going to take their temperature we're going to take their addresses their phone numbers take care of all that then they'll walk around they'll pay their money and then if they have guns, then they'll get checked. Every single day of the show, this will happen. And we have a lot of people that come back to all three days. We're going to keep them in alphabetical order. So if they come in, all that information is going to be on one sheet. So if we ever have to prove anything or give any information to anybody that needs it, we have it very well organized and easy to get to who needs it. Okay? Um, again, we're going to do temperatures, waivers, addresses, phone numbers. This is going to be for the vendors and the spectators, both. Okay. Um, anybody that comes in there. Uh, we're, again, we're going to keep it on record. I th I'm assuming we should keep it on for about a year. Do you guys have any suggestions you would, how long you would like us to keep it? You know, I don't know even how much you all um, want to get involved with that. I mean, I don't know what CDPHE's rules will be then or what mm -hmm. the governor's rules will be in August. I mean, I would suggest to follow the law. Uh, if you guys want to put extra conditions on it, great. But otherwise, I would just defer to the 
whatever right. the laws in place. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever regulations yeah. exist at the time. I would okay. Say it needs yeah. to be a year. Yeah, I would think 30 days mm -hmm. or two months. Is well, it it'll, it'll be stated because that's the end of August. Yeah. Is what you said? It'll be the 14th, 15th, and 16th Little. of August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you. I mean, you all can put a requirement that she keep it for a certain amount of days, but mm -hmm. I don't think you need to. I think yeah. you all just should say, yeah, hey, but, follow the laws. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Okay. All right. Use your um, best discretion there. Okay. Okay. Now, when it comes to the tables, what we're going to do is normally the tables are just right next to each other. So we're going to do the social distancing and spread them apart. We're going to use the whole entire arena this year instead of always keeping everything in half of the arena mm -hmm. and having sponsors with their vehicles and stuff and the rest of it. So we're going to really spread it out so you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, on the, uh, we're not going to have any food vendors. We're going to just let that, that problem take care of itself. And um, Friday, we're going to be open from 5 to 9. Saturday will be 9 to 5. And Sunday will be 9 to 2, just like we always have. But again, we're, we're setting it up that everything's taken care of before anybody comes in. So all, the, keeping us in 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 tune to requirements and everything is taken care of first before everybody comes in and it just starts enjoying themselves um do you guys have any any questions any thoughts anything you want to see when it comes to masks um i have a gentleman that is making a special mask actually for the gun show with our logo on it and everything we'll have them available they're a lot different than just the um the ordinary paper masks it, they're made out of a different material very very breathable people can breathe through them really mm -hmm. easy um if they want to wear them it's not we're not gonna you know say you have to have them if you walk in but if you feel more comfortable wearing them we will have them available if they don't bring their own. So that's that's about all that that right now we're going to uh, we have on our, our books. Um, as we get going, we're going to probably put maybe some other things in into I have a gun show meeting tonight. And so I don't know what else the members will want. But if we change anything or add anything, do you want me to just kind of Call Shaq and tell him so he can keep you updated, or do you want me to come back and? Yeah, I think you can get to, just get with Shaq and okay. Justin of what's going on out there. Because okay, well, Justin, you know, Justin's been a lot of help too. He sent me all the guidelines from the state and all that sort of stuff. It'll, so. it'll change by August 15th. Oh, I know. Uh, I'm sure. It'll change by noon. Yeah. <laughs> will there be? Uh, will there be lots of bullets? Yes. Um, you do know that there has been a 70% increase in gun sales <coughs> and ammo sales since the uh, pandemic has come about. So I'm anticipating. Is that so people can shoot at the virus? <laughs> well, um, I'm going to keep my opinions quiet. But you all know how I feel about guns and, and uh, everything that, that this country deals with. I think this pandemic has brought on a lot of other issues that we all need to think about and how our country is going forward. And so I think a lot of people are, are looking at things a little bit differently. And so, yes, I'm, I'm trying to get. And the really kind of neat thing is they're, they've had to cancel all the gun shows around us since March. And we will technically be really the first gun show opening up. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I think a lot of people will be able to come and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you never know. Mm -hmm. All right. What other vendors? Right now we're just waiting to make sure it's okay with the county commissioners that we go forward with us, with it. And now if you guys are okay with it, and I think you are because of what we've talked about, I'll be able to even advertise it even more, and we'll we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Gail, the only the only restrictions that I think you'll see, and they won't come from us; they'll come from the state and CDPHE and our governor. I if know. There are, and and we'll just have to 
Like Jim said, between now and August 15th, there could be a lot. They could be lax. They could be a lot more lax, or they could be, as in Arizona, a hell of a lot more restrictive. I know. On, depending on what goes on here. So, Unfortunately, so as a business owner in the city in Montezuma County, I have already dealt with the uh, governor and his mm -hmm. issues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really choosing my words nicely here, gentlemen. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, yeah, you know, because my business on North Broadway, I sit under a lot of different rules and regulations than salons, barbershops, everything. And so when they came down and shut me down, it just was like, wait a minute here. And I was very lucky because I was prepared to open up when they were going to only, they were only going to close us for two weeks, but then they opened it up, made us stay for almost a month. And by the month end, I was like, you know what? I have bills to pay. I'm, I don't care what he says. They can come and put me in jail. Because I wasn't, I was over it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared to try and deal with it. And I believe our, our board is also. So, right, well, thank okay. You. Yep. Any okay. other questions? Nope. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate yep. it. Thanks. Have a good so, day. Thank you. I guess the road and bridge lease renewal is going to be uh, postponed. Postponed until next week. So we're going to go to uh, County Clerk Kim Purcell. Well, our oh. na neighbor right here. Yeah. She's going to go down. I'm oh, she's she's going to come go. down here. You're this gonna is going to take like two seconds. Nice. Well, maybe five. <laughs> well, you know me. Maybe ten. <laughs> um, real quickly, I just wanted to let you guys know that we are still. What I'm doing right now is we have been offered. A, another ballot box, 24 hour ballot box grant opportunity. So I'm working on getting another ballot box for the city of Cortez to put at the city building. So then we will have one ballot box at every city building, Mancus, Dolores, wow. Cortez, and then in Toyot. That gives us an east side um, ballot box for Cortez and a west side ballot box nice. for Cortez. So that's what we're working on. Good. The digitization project has been started. They're working on our microfiche and our aperture cards now. They will be in office probably the end of July, the 1st of August, to start on the vault. Good. Okay. Um, the grant funding, I told you guys this last week, but I'm really excited about it because it took me a whole year to get it. The grant funding re that um, they offered for the tribal VSP required VSPs for the tribal area we did get the grant and that equipment will be delivered this tuesday so we should be set to have a vspc in Final toya for the general election good yeah um i've already talked to you guys our phones and our lines are very busy we had people at the door this morning last friday we had 186 transactions for three deputies Oof. which averages about 60 per and it averaged a customer every eight minutes and on top of that, we had 112 messages. So just Dang, to let you guys know that. What did you do to make it that busy? It's just, <laughs> I don't know why, but everybody's buying cars or they're getting <laughs> registration. I don't buying know where the- Buying guns and buying yeah. cars, here we go. <laughs> here we go. The kiosk program that I've talked to you guys about in the past, they are moving forward with that. So hopefully by next year, we should start getting into that information where Good. we might be able to set up a kiosk Good. in either city market um, it might be even better for us to have it at our building because if we do it at our building, we can have actual cash in there and we can take care of it so people could pay by cash. If they use a credit card, there is an additional fee for that. Mm -hmm. But if we have it in our building, then we can control um, the cash and that kind of stuff mm. rather than running to city market. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I wanted to let you know is um, Phaedra and I are working, working on straightening out all of our budget issues um, when we in the past when we've gotten a reimbursement for our elections it's just gone into a reimbursement fund so she's setting us up so that the funds that we receive will be showing on my budget so you guys will be aware what what's actually been reimbursed to pay for these elections oh, or, or that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you guys got questions I for got me? a question for you on the do you have any timetable for the results of the election tonight? So what our plan is tonight is, um, depending on, like I was mentioning to you guys earlier, last year the election, we got just about, I think either 1,500 or 2,000 ballots between five and seven. 
So what our plan is tonight is about 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, we're going to assess what we have left. If, if we've got 2,000 ballots, I'm not going to make my judges stay until 3 in the morning. We're going to do an unofficial report, let people know what's going on, and then we will start tabulation again in the morning. Okay. So, so you'll have some sort of a result by 10 o'clock tonight. But it doesn't look like you're going to get that many this afternoon. The, the, I mean, you've got that many in, right? You've got, what, almost 7,000 in right now? Uh, all right now, I have 7,564 return ballots. That's not including undeliverables. Mm -hmm. um, we received almost 800 yesterday, but like I say, I don't, I can't tell oh, what yeah. I will get between today. Yeah. I'm, I'm, all the way to seven today. Uh, yeah, I'm actually expecting at least a thousand ballots today, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. Oh. So, but we'll, we're going to do what we can do and, yeah. and I have an awesome crew working Good. very hard Good. and we were totally caught up as of this morning. So. Good. 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 Thank you. Yep. All right. Next on the agenda, we have uh, the county assessor, Sassy, I mean, Leslie Bug. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was that? Sassy. Leslie Bug. Leslie, I get a yes. new name every time I come well, here. Well, you do. You get a whole new identity every time you show Sassy. up here, don't you? <laughs> Kathy? Well, mine will probably be shorter than Kim's. <laughs> okay. Um, due to COVID, all of my deadlines got backed up about two to three months. So I haven't even started my year yet really um cboe hearings will start um they're able to start tomorrow and go through september 29th um, deadlines for taxpayers to protest to the cboe will be still july 15th mm -hmm. um i'm expecting one for sure maybe two but that's about all that's not bad. we only had five protests yeah for, for this year it's been so, really marginal uh, maybe minimal been. yeah um I will, by September 7th, have a report for all the assessed value for 2020. I'll have personal property out by then, sand, sand and gravel, oil and gas, all that will be done and back to me um, with a kind of a guesstimated, it's not a set in stone yet. Mm -hmm. um, things are just kind of clicking along. Yeah. You don't really have, yeah. I mean, it's definitely been a weird year in our office yeah. well, with yeah. everything that's changed. <laughs> I mean, we have like... You still have all the same work, but everything is just, you get it all done and then you find out you got to put it on the back burner and mm -hmm. wait for something else to happen or something else to come in. So it's been different. It's been Leslie, where, where are you with uh, Kinder Morgan's, the Supreme Court decision on those back taxes on those years where they, we, we have only have 09 still in debate, right? Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Everything else. That appeals. Been, been paid, so 09. Up to 2000 and 14. So Kinder Morgan has 15 and 16 audits right now. 17, uh, Mary Ellen is working on 17. Mm -hmm. And then we're done. Yeah. So and maybe we're caught up and done. Everything else has been paid. Um, the only one still in litigation is open. When do you anticipate 2017 audit being done? Um, she got 16s done in about a month and a half. So I would say we probably have that to Kinder Morgan by in the summer. Cool. And then it's just a matter of waiting on them to get. You know they have to have a chance to look at it mm -hmm. get us their counter offer on their value and then we just negotiate the value and go from there mm -hmm. so i wouldn't expect i mean i would expect payments to be towards the end of the year like they always do they always wait until the very last day of the work <laughs> that's how we've been it's all the way it's I, always been. I had a constituent uh, confront me and he said um he says you know that you guys doubled my taxes in one year and he says uh I don't know what to do. He says it went from twelve dollars to twenty-four, so I think I'll just pay it. <laughs> just broke that him is in a true half. story. That's what he says I think I'll just pay it. Broke him in half, but he's gonna pay it anyway, huh? <laughs> it seems like a lot of the complaints we get about the assessment of taxes, people are very emotional about it, and when you realize what the increase or what the change was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We you, have people that Climb all over it for five dollars. Right, <laughs> and that's not even their taxes. That's just their evaluation. Evaluation, five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's. it's I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Well, well, when you when you when you increase the assessed value of things, it sometimes looks bigger to people well, without examining. Well, that's one examining. thing they don't understand when they get their notice of value and it says your increase is fifty thousand dollars. They think their tax are yeah, going they think their tax bill is going to go up. And, and I mean, I, I can see where they would freak out. I'd get panicked. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd get panicked too. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's why we try and explain it. it. <laughs> Fifty thousand times a day is yeah. that it's just your assessment, not your taxes. But Leslie did win you some taxes last week 
-hmm. this week last week last on week Walmart on Walmart yeah. yeah and no district court hearing yep I'm excited about that we're done yeah. any questions any that's other questions? good how, I, yeah no, never mind. what I was gonna say how come it, the phone just gets transferred from Ellen to Leslie and Leslie to Ellen and then Ellen to Lori <laughs> and Lori to or I mean now it's sassy. I'm just messing with now it gets sassy all right, thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Leslie. <coughs> Let's go with Ellen Black now, the county treasurer. Yeah, get that close to you, Ellen, so they can hear out there in TV land. Okay. <laughs> that part's kind of nerve wracking. Um, so tax collection, we are, when I did the report yesterday, we're exactly the same, not dollar for dollar because we obviously, but percentage wise, 93.68% collection. Wow. Wow. Exactly. That, I thought that was that, so weird that it would be the well, same. Well, that's that, about as uh, about as astounding as knowing that the city of Cortez is 10% above their same tax yeah. collections as last year. It just blew, blew my mind. It is. It but is it just shows strange. you that Walmart, the grocery stores, the pot shops, and the liquor stores are doing a land office business <laughs> uh, during so. this pandemic stuff. Yeah. It just shows you the city isn't doing nothing because they won't open the poll. Yeah. Well, well and we don't have a sales tax, so we're just relying still. And people have been really understanding and yeah. good about paying, I think. Well, that's County amazing. General that's is right where it was last year, so that that's good. That we're not good. looking anything different. And Most those, of those what's were delayed also, right? Those. I'm sorry? The payments were also delayed? The payment, they delayed the first half interest until april 30th some things I, I mean i just didn't understand what they were doing i think at the beginning they should have delayed the interest to like august that mm. would have been good and fair to everyone but the way it worked out really it didn't benefit hardly anyone Anybody. that they did that because you know yeah. people that were going to pay in full were going to do it by april 30th anyway and then some people had to pay interest in may and june that's why when they threw that other bill out there, they just I just didn't think it was fair because yeah. why, why are we going to reward people that when other people have already had to pay and there's no way to refund it? You can't take it back out of all yeah. those authorities to refund it. Yeah. So, yeah. so actually, I think we're sitting really good. I know that there's some lodging and some businesses that may still be really struggling. They will be. Um, that's most of what we have outstanding. Um, our foreclosures are, we've actually been pretty slow, but we predict that that will go up in the next mm -hmm. year. Just depending on what happens, hopefully it won't. Um, but that's just an area that when you have something like this happening, you know you're going to predict that in the future more. Um, when we had the 08 downturn or whatever you want to call that in the economy devastation to the economy it really the next year then we started seeing the foreclosures and i wasn't in the treasurer's office then but we can look back and say we way well surpassed what we usually do mm -hmm. so we may see that next year do you I hope have we a don't. percentage of i mean looking at 08 you know, it was, um, if we normally have around 40 active foreclosures, which is, um, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is when you're dealing with foreclosures because there's a lot of um, paperwork going on with that. It went to well over, did we have like how many in a month? Almost 100, well, we had that whole year, almost 150. Yeah, now, so and that's a lot for this county. So, yeah. so we may yeah. see that and we'll, you know, some but of we you, won't see that until I hope we next don't year. see it. I hope people are if able we'll to it. keep going, but we may. Um, releases that's kind of still staying the same. The only other thing that may be different because of COVID is our tax lien sale because we always do it in that little room downstairs, and that seems kind of weird to me. What do you guys think about that? With that. Do you have an mm -hmm. alternate location? Much bigger room up here. Well, we could do it, it here, and then I'm also considering doing it online, which is of no cost to the county. It's a, um, 
the investor. In fact, the company that I'm considering won't even charge to do it the first year. Hmm. So even the investors wouldn't be paying. But a lot of the investors aren't real keen on going with online either. Yeah. They're not, you know, how people yeah. are. Um, I'd, I'd make your move. I'd, I'd try it here in this room. I, I think this room would be a, this is like a six good times venue for bigger it. than that room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a consideration. We may end up doing it. And then if you do here. go online, you could still do some on. You could do. I don't think you can do it. You either have to be either one or one or the other. Because, not not a combined. Right. I got you. They have to control you. the auction or not. I got so you. So otherwise, I you. Yeah. I'm just doing it. So I think it's better to do it in person then. Well, yeah. that's what most of the investors yeah. think. So we'll yeah. t we'll still well, kick that around. I'm going to see a online auctions. auctions. Yeah. What's that? There are a lot of online oh, yeah. auctions. Oh yeah. Well, and in a way, it opens it up to more people that may not be comfortable coming in and doing, but you have. You know, yeah. the ones that are used to coming in, they like it like yeah. that. So anyway, that's just a consideration and I'll be making that decision in the next few months. So okay. do you have any questions? Commissioners? Gosh, no, not. I'm just tickled to see you're at 93%. Me which too. Is that's just that, that that's kind of, really good. I was yeah, really that worried about of. that. So that's good. And hopefully the businesses can keep going. Keep I'm going. Yeah. Hopefully we can get open enough, get keep going. them alive. Yeah. Yep. I, All right. I actually had one, one question on oh, our sure. interest rates. Are we still averaging approximately about 2% on, 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 oh, on investment on rates? Investments? Um, cause I know some were less, some were more. Yeah. I'm sorry. I should average. have brought that information. Um, actually no, because, um, Colo trust, is based off of everything else that's happening. If you've looked at CD rates lately, <laughs> really not good. <laughs> so probably we're down from where we would have been last year because we have so m the bulk of the investment into Colo Trust. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's enough that it's going to be um, devastating. But I'll come up with some figures on that. I'll look, okay. especially after June, because I balance through June for the six month yes. report. And then we'll see where we are with that. Okay. Yeah, if you could just let us know. You bet. Will do. All right. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate thank it. You. We have the uh, Southwest Health System update. Tony Suddeth and um, Rick. I just need to look at the Schrader. Schrader? Mm-hmm. Mr. Schrader. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Good morning, guys. Um, yeah, Bridget sent it last night, and I forwarded it this morning, so they do have it in their emails. We have yes. it electronically. Do you guys want a paper? Yeah, okay, thank you. This morning. Yeah, I've got it on my email. Yeah, Shaq cool. sent it to us. Anybody wants <coughs> Does anybody want a paper copy? Where, would, where do you want to start, Tony, with the presentation or with the, that? Uh, we can start with the financials if you want. It's probably the okay. area of biggest interest right now. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple of things we want to share with you, just our year-to-date uh, performance and also the, uh, we had the audit report from 2019, which was presented to our board uh, last week. Um, you know, overall, just generally, we're starting to see somewhat uh, return to our normal volumes. I think June, we're going to be down about 10% in revenue, it looks like, but uh, that's better than the 20 plus we bid at, uh, earlier, the, at earlier the year. So. But I'll let uh, Rick go over the uh, numbers and answer any questions you might have. We'll do that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, again, we uh, we had our audit uh, opinion and just want to kind of page on over to uh, page uh, basically page five. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, uh, from from an income statement standpoint. Uh, you know, we had a we had an operate, operating improvement of about six point uh, two five million dollars, uh, dropping uh, operating loss from eight point two uh, to about one point nine five. Uh, with our non-operating revenues and so forth, uh, actually we had about a six point seven five uh, million dollar improvement uh, from twenty nineteen over twenty eighteen. Uh, just kind of looking at some things, we had a change in uh, on page seven. In operating activities, change of assets of about two hundred seventy thousand uh, dollars. Again, if if you kind of look want to look through here around uh, cash and cash equivalents, from an increase of four million dollars, uh, basically about the only the only uh, real impact we had was depreciation, and that was from the new structure <laughs> that was built in uh, 2018, the hospital expansion, 
and that uh, again, and, and we we have probably about three hundred and seventy thousand dollars of depreciation uh, per month uh, with the building and some of the other equip equipment um, you know it was a uh, it was a clean audit it, it's uh, I think Tony's been here a little over two years I've been here uh, basically coming up on about uh, uh, nine, uh, 20 months uh, so uh, you know things are working and we appreciate um, uh, we appreciate the community and, and everything that uh, everything that we're going through there uh, again won't uh, won't uh, bore you with any any of uh, some of the details or language but um, from a standpoint uh, uh, there was no note in here about a uh, going concern, and a going concern means is the hospital going to survive? Uh, so, from the standpoint of where everything is right now, uh, the hospital's in as good a financial shape as it's been in a long time. So, and again, uh, and we appreciate all the staff. We can't thank our staff enough uh, for all the efforts that they're doing. I just kind of wanted to open it up to questions for you guys on the audit. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I, ju I just I want, wanted to ask you on the on the purchase of your machine, uh, uh, your, your COVID Max, testing uh, machine. machine. Yes, sir. How, how did you come out? Because I, I know of about, uh, I think you, what was the purchase price on that? Seven, 68 or 70,000? It, it was about 83,000. Yeah. 83,000? Yes, sir. And I know with the county and some others, uh, there's about 50,000 that was, uh, how much did you get in donations towards that machine? Uh, roughly through the foundation, about $120,000. Yeah. Okay. Which some of that. Uh, some of that paid for some additional testing supplies. The okay. testing kits are about forty-seven bucks a kit. Yeah. So we're getting about two forty a week, uh, which translates into about uh, about ninety-three hundred dollars in supplies supply costs per week. But you but you get don't you get reimbursed for some of that testing? Don't you get? Uh, we do get some reimbursement, but a lot of the things we did is um, if anybody. <coughs> If anybody doesn't have the ability to pay, we're not going to turn anybody away from from the testing site again. But what, uh, well, insurance will some insurance carriers uh, some pay pay for yeah. pay for that? Okay. Yes. Are the right, tests so. just for COVID, or are the tests for other things as well? These testing kits. Uh, the the testing kits that are forty seven bucks a pop are COVID. Okay. Uh, the COVID BD testing. the BD Max machine can also do some other uh, right. molecular testing. Right. So how many test kits do we have? We're still. We're still okay, correct, or we, we are? We're I actually don't know the total number, but it, as far as having enough available, it's not even an issue right now. Okay, yeah. good. Because uh, that was an issue for, for was, either one of them. For a while. Yeah, we're, we're getting about 240 a week. Mm -hmm. That's our allocation, because uh, we're having to prove our allocation. And we used about 40 test kits to kind of, you have to go through the, um, uh, basically you have to um, condition the machine. You want to make sure that you're not you know that that it's accurate calibrate yeah. uh, so you're calibrating the machine so we used about 40 test kits on that where we sent uh, some additional tests out so um, and, and we we had a good partner to kind of do that and, and so the, are you still using them both the Abbott and the the BD max or are you kind of uh, we actually are still using both depending on yeah. the, the circumstance whether it's something we need a result that fast or not yeah. right uh, we're doing that you know, we're still seeing um, averaging about 15 in our drive through every day. Yesterday we had 20. 40. 40. 40? Yes, sir. Yeah, it was, it was wow. a really busy day for some reason. But yes, sir. We have cut that back to three days a week, so we're not doing this. Does the test kits have an expiration date? I don't no, know. No, sir. Not, not well, they do, but not, it's not like in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. It, it, you know, uh, so we'll use the test kits up. We well, they they won't get wasted. probably have a two, three year shelf life. Yeah, I think it's, I, it's at least a year. Yes, sir. Do, do you have any COVID patients in the hospital right now out of the 10 or 12 active cases? We do not. Not that I'm worried. Unless, unless one showed up when we were here. Yeah. Right, right. Yes, sir. But, but <laughs> as could have happened as, as long as we've been here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <Got> you. <laughs> and that could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. So financially, then, it looks, I mean, we're doing okay. We're not, we're not. Right. You want to talk about our year to date? Or our yeah. concerns of, you know, not, I think not that's having anybody somewhere in, the in your regular work. presentation here. Yeah. That she's in over, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we can we can hit that. We we had a strong May, and again, um, I don't know if you want to hit this so we don't screw up the slide deck. Uh, like I said, I think we've talked. You know, any questions they've got about that, I'll be glad to answer. 
uh, answer, but uh, otherwise, I'd if you could, or yeah, if you could page down to the financial, uh, the um, it's probably two. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so there, there. Here's our narrative uh, from a standpoint of uh, of where we are. Uh, again, we had you know strong reimbursement collections of about three point nine million dollars, and that's Medicare and some of the insurance companies, as well as some patient cash collections. Uh, we did see some stimulus money from the feds. They're helping to make up our, our short-term loss in uh, net revenues and so forth. Uh, we, we were operating probably at a, close to 80% uh, in May. Um, uh, so we had some increases there. Uh, you know, we had some slight inventory increases. Uh, one of the things that we're doing to kind of give you guys a heads up is uh, we're, we're trying to uh, expand our inventory counts to additional PPE in case we have another phase two or, or something else. Uh, and PPE is a uh, protective, well, heck, you guys know what it is. Y'all been living the same as us. So, yeah. uh, so uh, our protective equipment. Uh, so from a revenue over expense for May, it was uh, $3 million. Uh, year to date is uh, 1.2. Uh, our earnings before interest depreciation and amortization for May was 3.6 million. And year to date EBITDA is about 3.7. So, um, so again, uh, you know, strong financials from that from that perspective, uh, and and like Tony said, we're seeing probably about ninety percent volumes for June, uh, things like that. So it's um, uh, it, it, I'd say it's getting you know more more back into the realm of what we budgeted for this year. So without without those stimulus dollars, you'd you'd be. We'd be sucking you'd be, wind, you'd yes, be, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it, it would be very tough. And unfortunately, yeah. what it's done is it's allowed us not to have to do what most healthcare systems have had to do. Yeah. And with start, layoffs and start cutting, start doing, yeah, like layoffs exactly. and cuts and, yeah. Exactly. Okay, well. Anything else? Uh, no, just uh, uh, Zion. Zion, your uh, your your lender is, is uh, still happy with the way things are going with the hospital? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, I mean, obviously the big issue has been days cash on hand. Sure. If you look where we are right now, we're about 110, 110 which is over our 80. Yeah. You're now, now, reality is we, we're likely going to have to pay some of that money back. back sure. We think we will as far as the Medicare advance. Although there is a bill uh, circulating in Congress right now about allowing hospitals to keep that. So Forgive that. We're yeah. hopeful that uh, you yeah. to keep it. But well, well, that's uh, about 30 days, a little under 30 days. Yeah, it's about $5.6 million. Yeah. So, you know, we, we anticipate, we're, we're assuming we're going to have to give that back right now, but that would still keep us around 80 days. So yeah. We're, we're in pretty good shape. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. What the question is still a 30 day increase basically from the last time we talked, right? Because we were, uh, around. we were probably at like 43 days. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so giving that money back would probably put us uh, somewhere around 78 days, something yeah, like that. Right so, yeah. So, yes, sir. About 35 days. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I, I have nothing else. No. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, thank Appreciate you guys. You. Yep. Take care. Thank you guys. Hopefully, so. Hopefully things will keep getting better and better and better. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you. Yep. County Attorney Report, John Baxter. Uh -huh. So the, our employment um, lawsuit that we have going on from, from the health department seems to be ramping up and taking up a lot of people's time. Um, there's a number of employees from IT, Shack. Um, the health department and ex-employees that are going to be summoned or subpoenaed to give depositions. Uh, you know, this is what they do: is they just try to, I think, um, Where is that? cost the cost the county some money yeah. and, and efficiency yeah. by doing these things. Uh, <clears throat> they 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 want to depose Bobby for a full day. Um, is there so, any way to go get fees back and if, if it's not? Uh, potentially, but um, I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't count on it in this type of case. Um, there is the potential, but it have to, uh, you'd have to meet certain thresholds to convince the judge about the merit of these things. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we already told you about Walmart. Um, we're set for oral argument at the Court of Appeals uh, later this month, or in July, sorry, for <coughs> the Weber Canyon Road appeal, which seems to me like to be another complete waste of time. Uh, <laughs> we, we are set for trial, 
but they're appealing Judge Plew's denial of their preliminary injunction, uh, which seems to me to uh, not have any effect really on, on this case at all, but takes our time, of course. So it's just a tact of, it, of delaying <coughs> time? Um, it doesn't really delay anything. It's not delay any, delaying anything, it just causes work. Um, so it, 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 it's money for the attorneys, that's for sure. <laughs> so we're still set for court in October? We are still set for court in October. We had a phone conference yesterday with uh, Hawks' attorneys in Denver, the newer attorneys in Denver, and insurance and myself. Uh, Definitely people do not anticipate going to trial in October. I was, I think, the only person on the call insisting that we do not ask to continue, but because of the court's log jam, I said, look, it's, it's, you're likely going to get your continuances anyway. Um, wh if we ask for a continuance, then I feel like it's going to get kicked out so far and they'll blame it on the parties. Or, or, if, or if the Hawks has asked for a continuance, I think I convinced them to not ask for a continuance. Um, with the understanding that we're probably going to get bumped out till next year anyway, anyway. just because of COVID. Uh, so, so we are still set in October. <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I think I was the only person on that phone call. But, but I think I got my way, which still won't make too much of a difference other than not delay it even farther. Uh, what else is going on? Um, <clears throat> And, and, and just to emphasize about that Walmart case, there were some counties that settled with Walmart for a certain amount of money, um, change in what the assessment was. They filed the same motion to dismiss in our case as they did with those other counties, but to be clear, we did not settle for anything. Um, the settlement was you're dismissing the case mm -hmm. and, and we're gonna keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. There's you're no money pay changes. What you owe and yes. Yeah. I think that's it. Good. All right, Natural Resources Planning and Public Lands Report with James Dietrich. Good morning, morning Mr. James. Dietrich. Morning. Uh, gentlemen, I think I'll lead off this morning with the uh, letter uh, to about the M&M &M truck stop uh, sent to OPS. And I think you've all had a chance to, to review that, hopefully. Um, I did try to work in a little bit about our other, uh, uh, other brownfield in there, so I did, did try to give them uh, a little bit of heads up on that. But basically, we're, we're requesting a meeting with, uh, with OPS and to try to get some face-to-face -face or at least Zoom uh, meeting going with them to try to get some movement on this. It does sound like they're still very interested in moving forward with it. I think they've got some budgetary problems and uh, that, that type of thing. But they are, are scheduled to do some additional testing here this month. Um, and hopefully that is followed up immediately with uh, some excavation and getting some action done on the ground. But, uh, so anyway, um, hopefully we've had a chance to review this letter. If there were any revisions or anything, um, I'm happy to go ahead and make those. Um, we can do this very quickly. No, I, I read it and I, I have no revision. I don't either. Okay. Sounds good, James. I'll bring a clean copy so, up yep. then. Send that on. We need to do a motion. If you're signing oh. it. I haven't seen it, but if it's got their names on it, they should do a motion. Scroll down, check. Uh, if you don't don't mind. Mind. Or the other way. Sorry. Go up. Bar Reba. Up. Yeah. Go for the <laughs> So I would move that oh, we uh, that was an oversight on my part. send the letter to Robert Herbert, the remediation supervisor at 1001 East 67th Avenue in Denver in regards to the Montezuma County m and truck stop facility, ID 9977, event ID 5039. Second. Motion and a second to uh, approve sending a letter to Robert Herbert through re remediation. remediation. Remediation, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Supervisor um, for the Montezuma County, the truck stop that's in Montezuma County, um, at uh, event ID 5039, all those in favor? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Keeps jumping. 
Aye. <laughs> Aye. Did you Aye. see him twitching that damn thing? What did I do? No, no, no. Yeah. The shack down the shack. It's, he was jiggling that letter back and forth. Like, oh, he was messing with you. And that was for me? I think for it me? was. I think it was. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't what swear comes to around him. goes around. That's true. <laughs> Can I borrow some of your fireworks? Shaq needs to have his house rocked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, we'll get, get that sent off right away. Yeah. Um, and then the next item I had was uh, we got notification on the uh, draft EA for the Rico West Dolores Trails project. Um, we did comment uh, earlier this spring, and I, I, I just sent you around uh, the comments that we made earlier this spring. Um, so we're in the EA process, and at this point we'll have to make a comment to maintain standing. Um, there are two specific changes within that EA. Um, that, that really stand out. The first one is the Ryman Creek Trail, which would have a seasonal closure from May 15th to June 30th to improve habitat conditions for elk uh, production. Now the closure would, would apply to motorized and mountain bikes. Um, so, and then, you know, horseback and uh, pedestrian would be open for that. So that oh, is the, the, the one thing. I'm Ryman sorry? Creek. Ryman Creek. Uh, yes, Ryman Creek. Uh, so that, that is one change they're proposing. Then the other major change is the existing segment of the Stony Creek Trail between East and West Spring trails would remain open as currently designated. So, um, you know, I, I haven't really done, we just got the notice on this, so I haven't really reached out to the, the two entities that, that were participating in this. Um, I, I kind of anticipate we'll get some pushback on the, the seasonal closure. Um, probably the existing segment of Stoner Creek Trail, I'm not anticipating too much pushback on that at all. But uh, we'll do our research on that and find out where everybody comes down on that. So, and, uh, and of course this isn't due for, for a little bit yet, so we'll, we'll have uh, some time to uh, bring this back to the commissioners and, and let you know what, what people are thinking out there. Um, and then the third thing is the uh, painted hand. We've got a notice for scoping on that. Um, I, uh, during the, uh, the lockdown, since I couldn't get out in the garden or go anywhere or do anything, uh, I spent a little time uh, helping them out with doing a little bit of uh, conceptual design. And so uh, what they were asking for was, you know, how, how are we going to get a parking area in there that uh, is, uh, uses some screening so it's not uh, visible from the ruin itself. Um, they wanted to have the, the ability to get large vehicles in there, tour buses, for example. Um, so uh, what I gave them was, was kind of a staggered uh, parking layout. Um, and so as you can see from that, you're able to, to fit in some, uh, some tour buses. Um, and the beauty of the, the, this sort of a design is, is, is uh, it, it really kind of overlays the disturbed area out there already. Um, you can bring a bus in and you can park that thing parallel and you can also take that bus out without having to back it out and turn around because it has a turnaround at the very end. Um, it also accommodates uh, parking for horse trailers uh, very easily for that. Um, it will also accommodate parking for regular vehicles. Um, and so as you can see from, uh, from those photos, uh, I think we gave them a pretty good idea of what they can do in there. So. Um, and at this point, you know, I just did this kind of on my own time. So, um, you know, at, at this point, it's, it's a private comment. Um, I, I just wanted to bring it to the commissioners and, and let them see what, um, what we've got. And um, if this is something the commissioners agree with, then we can uh, roll this in and make this a county comment also. Yeah, because they're, they're redoing that road and everything uh, into yeah. that painted hand, aren't they? They're re realigning the road and they're, they're yes. doing like a, did I understand that uh, to be a hard surface as in chip seal or asphalt now i didn't really get that it would be an all-weather surface so okay, maybe, I mean, maybe i read into that that it was going to be more and more to it than that but yeah okay you know it, it, and it could still so be a very good gravel surface and, yeah and it should that. be i think if they're going to redo I mean, that they ought to yeah yeah it, it certainly be. i mean this one is prob probably their uh, you know their showcase in terms of the ruins out there as far as the blm goes yeah 
Uh, but, but really the nuts and bolts of this was really to avoid the private land because that, that access road did go across private land and the BLM did not have a right of way for it. Yeah. So this, this alleviates that landowner's concerns and I think ultimately probably gives them a better product in the end anyway. Do you, you think they're going to get this done anytime soon, James? Or is it, uh, Boy, I don't know. I mean, I haven't got <laughs> I mean, any, any this real is indications big on undertaking that. here, man, for them. I mean, we, we oh, yes. fought for them, what, four or five years just to get that Sand Canyon, little old dinky parking lot. You're talking, you're talking a major deal here, road relocation, all kinds of stuff. This, That's right. Yeah. They might get this by 2015, ten, maybe. Ten years. Yeah, 15, I'd sure. say, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, they, the BLM talked to me, um, you know, ahead of time before they're scoping on this so that we could get something to them and get it to their ID team before they even started this process. Because they really needed, first of all, they, they liked what we did for them down at Sand Canyon. And so to try to get ahead of their ID team on, and everything on that was, was beneficial. Kind of gives them something to look at and something to think about and review versus just starting from scratch. So now they're, they're going to have to go, as, as I understand it, go through all the NEPA and all that um, mm -hmm, still mm -hmm, at this point. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I anticipate it will be a while be out forever. there. But yeah. one of my other thoughts about it, one of the reasons I really want to jump on it is we don't know what kind of stimulus money may be coming down towards the BLM or other, or other federal agencies that could be a benefit to, to some of our, our private um, construction outfits around yeah. here. Somebody may be able to bid on that and get in on this. It yeah. could be beneficial to our community sure. too. So. Sure could. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I will finalize that and make that a, a formal scoping comment then if uh, the commissioners feel like that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Good Very job, good. James. Um, That'll put you on salary, James. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I really want that. <laughs> I, I'm happy right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to uh, discuss with the commissioners was the uh, uh, proposal that we've got for the Paz Mesa Verde. Um, and I'm, okay, we don't need to make a decision on this today. Um, so this is a baseline. I just wanted to get that to the commissioners and let you know that we're, you know, we're in a, in a process of negotiation through this, this proposal. Um, the, the original proposal our original idea was really to try to do segment A and B. And we were getting the numbers in, it just doesn't look like they feel like they've got enough to be able to do both A and B. And part of it is, and, I, and this is somewhat understandable anyway, is that um, some, of, some of the A section is just an unknown. And so, you know, if, if we're able to actually secure that property and get that out away from the highway, that, that's a significant change. In, and so I kind of understand a, a lot of that. So I think that's kind of reflected in, in this baseline. Um, and so the proposal that they brought forward, we're working through this with, with CDOT. Uh, one thing about this proposal is, is we, we cannot get moving forward on this proposal until we get the IGA, IGA in place. Um, because the, we don't want to risk any expenditures happening outside of that IGA time frame. In order to get the IGA in place, I also had to initiate um, a request in the change of scope for the TPR and get that out to the Southwest TPR. They all have to vote on it and approve it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and part of this, you know, is, is the fact that we've, we've got a compressed time frame because they're going to lose their IGA specialist and that is going to delay them for months to rehire somebody, get them re-engaged, up to speed, and then there's going to be a backlog of IGAs that those guys are going to have to deal with too. So I decided to go ahead and initiate that process, and, and we can still negotiate things through it, um, but if we, we uh, lose our place in that process, we're, we're going to be delayed for a long time, and it seems pretty critical to kind of keep this thing moving forward as fast as we possibly can. Um, so, uh, you know, the numbers are coming in more than what we expected, um, and yet, you know, after doing some due diligence on it, it looks like it is pretty comparable to what we're seeing elsewhere in the state, with the exception of the Front Range, and, uh, you know, thank goodness we don't live up there, because I think we'd be looking at double, at least, up there for everything. So, uh, so I guess that's kind of where we're at. What there be from the city of I'm sorry? What kind of buy-in would there be in from the city of Cortez? I mean, would they expend funds? For this? Y yes, yes. We're counting on the city of Cortez as being our partner on this, this side of it. Yes. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to get this proposal in front of the commissioners, uh, let them, them have some time to look through it. Again, we can't sign it today, and I'm not asking for, for an approval on it today. I just um, wanted to get everybody uh, to, to get their heads into 
into the project and uh, kind of look at it, have an opportunity to even look at it line by line where we're at and see if, um, you know, where, where there might be some negotiation. Um, you know, after talking with OTAC, um, you know, again, I think these guys probably are the top top in their field uh, doing this kind of work, and this is an RFQ-based sort of a, a process. So, um, you know, and after talking with them about it, um, you, know, I th you know, I think they agreed that trying to work in the, the main structures that we've got that we know about so far and try to roll that all into this um, is a good idea, and that's what they did. So the idea is that if we bring this thing in under budget or um, you know, anywhere close to it, any remaining funds from the MMOF can then be rolled on into segment A and we continue working on segment A. But, but the idea is we get segment B to a shovel ready, that's 100% complete, and then we can start moving forward <coughs> with acquisition of, of funds for actual construction. Mm -hmm last thing I wanted to do is have two segments that were done to like, you know, say 90% and we're still left hanging out trying to finish up 10%. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that has kind of my, been my strategy on this. So. Okay. Um, so, um, I did I guess, have one question. So none of these, I read all this and, and um, we're not, we haven't done any of those, those steps already. That's correct. Okay. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, so uh, now what? Yeah. Right, and, and so the last one that we've had, we're still under contract on that last one, and so we are getting some survey work done in the LIDAR work, and so that'll give us the baseline. There's still some processing, some work that they'll have to do with it, um, but we are able to, to accomplish that at least from, our, our, uh, from the residuals from the last contract that we had. All right. so. so here's another thing, too. Um, I want to point out that um, CDOT does not want us to intermingle these two contracts together at all. And so we'll keep them specifically separate and, um, and hopefully keep in good graces with the, okay. the feds on that too. And that's mainly, mainly a record keeping uh, issue, so. Okay, I th yeah, I think we read something that you'd sent us about that as yeah. well. Anything else, James? Uh, not that I can think of right off the uh, top of James, the James, regarding the Summit County, or Summit Lake uh, easement, oh, yes. I touched base with Ernie this morning and he agrees. I think we're going to get a title company to to research the origins of that easement. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll do that unless you want to. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, please. I'll probably <laughs> might have to pay for it through our our travel dues and training budget that Shaq's trying to steal from us, but. Okay, and I, well, you know, of course, mine's not being used for that either. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm certainly happy to give all my budget to that, whatever we need. Um, it, it so. take that much I think research. if anybody's stealing money for from us, it's people who want to do a soil study to make sure the soil has the structural stability to hold up a bicycle. <laughs> Do you see the amount of the oh, engineering God. for crazy? A hundred thousand dollars a mile. Five hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To to the engineers. It's just insane what they charge. I mean, I'll you tell you I what, mean? if you would just give me 300000 for my garden and 500000 <laughs> I'll design you a path. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a happy man. You'd be a happy man. I'm going to let that go. Yeah, yeah, let's turn loose. I of think that, if man. you had a PE stamp, you would be getting that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you, James, for all the work. Yep. Okay. Good you bet, work. gentlemen. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you, James. James. All right, we'll go to our county administrator report with Austin Powers. I mean, shut Here I am. <laughs> so the first thing I have is a, another docu-signature um, from the health department where the docu-signature didn't work. This is for the um, Essentials for Childhood program. It's a, another contract that we do every year for them but of course cdphe's docu signatures aren't working so, so this is all approved have we already have we already, we already approved this shack on this. Cor correct this is um yes it is the essentials for childhood so program so we just need to the get signature, a signature on that for, for the our health department and yes that's correct nice. keep going Shaq. <laughs> the, oh. Before Commissioner Artell gets too it. far ahead in the okay. <laughs> his thinking that. <laughs> well, then the next thing is going to um, require a, a vote. 
Well, well you've already approved this too, but as the monies are, uh, as the roads are being built, we agreed to spend that money to transfer money from the general fund to the capital fund to pay for those. And we've got the first set of bills due to uh, four corners. And so we need to transfer $2,415,489.03 from the general fund to the capital fund. So if that was already approved, this is just a form. This you have to approve the transfer order. order. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. And there'll probably be a couple more in upcoming weeks, but this yeah. is for the first set. As they complete their projects and get the bill submitted to Rob. I would move that order number 4-2020, transferring $2,415,489.03 from the general fund to the capital fund to cover capital road improvement projects be approved. Second. Motion is second to approve order number 4-2020 the transfer of two million four hundred fifteen thousand four hundred eighty nine dollars and three cents from the general fund to the capital fund to cover capital road improvements projects all in favor aye aye, aye. okay and then um last week uh we had the reading of the bids uh for redoing the roofs at the sheriff's office and at annex three um after reviewing the bids with mike Top line's bid was a total of $270,155. Uh, their bid did include the required bid bond and a 20-year warranty. Um, ALS out of Aztec and TL Roofing out of Durango did not include the bid bond, and they were required in the instruction to bidders number four on page five of the manual. And DKG came in at $270,900. Um, they did have the bid bond, but uh, with that, um, top line is allowed a 5% advantage by state statute for being local. So I would recommend that the commissioners uh, award the bid to top line in the amount of $270,155. Top line, that's all it's called? Or top line? Top line installers. Yeah, top line installers. So I would move that we accept the bid, uh, or we, I'm sorry, we award the bid to top line installers at the amount of 270155 for the re-roofing project of the sheriff's office and the clerk's office. Second. Motion is second to approve the roofing project to top line installers for the amount of $270,155 for the sheriff and the clerk's office buildings. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then nobody showed up for the mandatory walkthrough at the fairgrounds with the remodel project. We don't have a whole lot of stuff going on at the fairgrounds, so I'm suggesting that our uh, maintenance crew along with the two hands that we have at the fairgrounds work together to uh, remodel that based on the drawings we've got and the equipment we've got they'd still have to uh, pick a plumber and, and maybe get some help with uh, polishing the concrete floor but other than that i think with five men we should be able to throughout the year get that kitchen and bathroom completed in-house any discussion commissioner you know, I, Mike's, Mike, Mike's on board, huh? Mike seemed to suggest that when he came in and we were talking with him about it before and he said that he could handle this and subcontract out what he's not capable and he and his staff are doing. And I'm, I'm all for giving it to him. Well, and he's got two extra hands out there. Probably, right. So, so I, 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 think, I think it's probably, a, you know, we either, we either do that or we don't have anything. We don't do the remodel because nobody bid it. So I, I think it goes without saying we let Mike and the crew out there at the fairgrounds take it on. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Okay. Tell All right. With it. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Uh, commissioner report. I'm going to make mine quick because Me too. I didn't, I had a actually pretty light week and most of the issues that we were going to talk about have already been addressed. So I really have no report. Um, I had a meeting with uh, Derek Padilla on uh, Friday. Uh, Dennis Atwater and myself went up and talked to him about the land purchase from the Zwicker, Zwicker Family Trust. 
Uh, Derek, they're, they're very preliminarily looking at that, and I don't think it's probably going to go uh, much further. We, we, uh, uh, we presented uh, the no net loss to Montezuma County, and, and you know, we point blank told Derek, we're fine with you buying that land as long as you're willing to put up 107 acres somewhere in the forest to offer it to private, private landowners to purchase some forest land. That, that, you know, it's a, as long, and I didn't realize, and he told us that property's in a conservation easement. Uh, somebody at some point, I don't know who, but put it into a conservation easement, so it's, it's kind of locked up as to what it can be done with or used for at any rate. But I have a feeling the Forest Service is going to back off from that, uh, from that acquisition, given our, given our concern and, and, our, and our ask to, uh, to be a no net loss transaction. You know, we basically told him if you want to do, the, you know, if it's something you want to do and want to go ahead with it, by all means do it. But we want, uh, we want just compensation put back in. And, and I also told him that uh, uh, we'd like to see the Forest Service do some things on property they already own, such as the lake and the breakwater and some other things that the Forest Service roads. And, and uh, if you've got money out there, let's spend it on some of the things you've already got rather than ac ac acquisitioning more land to throw into your, throw into your possession. So we'll see where it goes. They know where we stand, and, and he's very well aware of how, how we're looking at that. So that's all I have. Good, good work, Commissioner Rattel. And I, you, you all probably already know this, but that net loss uh, resolution that we did also allows you all to accept or negotiate something else it doesn't have to be right, an exact right. change mm -hmm. if, if you all think it's fair for them to go ahead and take that out of the county coffers but give you a million dollars on top of it then you can okay it sure. um and i'm serious so it's 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 either a fair land trade right. or something that you guys agree to that could otherwise compensate the county for for that loss good point I, and and that's not something that i i was completely aware of john but that's <clears throat> something that, that we can also keep negotiate in, our, in the future keep in our pocket. Right. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be a land for land trade. It can be land for some other kind of asset. So, okay. It's up to the BOCC. Gotcha. Very good. Anything Thanks. else? That's, good to know. that's it. No report. Public comment. <laughs> <laughs> I move we adjourn. <laughs> second. Motion second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye, aye. Aye. aye.